In a previous video, we talked about the androgens, the different types of androgens, their structures and their functions, how that they were being produced by the Leydig cells in the testes in male. They are the male sex hormones. In this video, we're going to be talking about the female sex hormones, which are estrogen and progesterone. We'll talk about the structure of estrogen and progesterone, where it is produced and their functions. Before we end the video, we'll also talk about how the production of these hormones, androgens and the female sex hormones are regulated by other hormones in our body. Now, when we talk about estrogen and progesterone, the fact is that they are secreted by the cells in the ovaries. Now, females have a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tubes and a uterus as part of their sexual reproductive system. And it is at the ovaries where estrogen and progesterone are produced. Apart from producing estrogen and progesterone, the ovaries are also responsible for the formation of the female gamete, which is known as the oocyte or the egg. Now, this is an image of an ovarian follicle. Thousands of such follicles make up each ovary. And if you see inside the transfer section of an ovarian follicle, the circular structure that you see here, this is the oocyte. It is surrounded by a layer of cells known as the granulosa cells. And it is these granulosa cells that produce estrogen and progesterone. But they don't produce it at the same time. Mature granulosa cells in a developing ovarian follicle they produce estrogen. But after the oocyte has been released, after ovulation takes place, the ovarian follicle begins to degenerate. That degenerating ovarian follicle then later produces progesterone. First, let's take a look at estrogen and talk about some of its functions. So, estrogen includes three major hormones, estrone, estradiol and estriol. This is a structure of estradiol. As you can see, there are four fused ring structures that make up estradiol because this is a sterol hormone, which means that it is derived from cholesterol, much like the other androgens that we saw in the previous video. But unlike those androgens, estrogen is not directly derived from cholesterol. In fact, it is produced from testosterone and androstenedione in the granulosa cells by the enzyme known as aromatase. What happens is that in females, cholesterol is initially converted to testosterone and androstenedione, which means that it is converted into androgens. And it is these androgens that are then converted to estrogen with the help of this enzyme known as aromatase. This is why low levels of testosterone and androstenedione can be detected in females as well even though androgens are primarily the male sex hormone, they are still found in small quantities in females because it is from testosterone and androstenedione that estrogen is produced. This is also why males have trace amounts of estrogen and progesterone in their body because in males as well, testosterone can be converted to estrogen at low levels. So estrogen has plenty of functions in the female body. It is the hormone that is mainly responsible for the follicular and oocyte development. It causes the ovarian follicle to mature, to develop at the end of which the oocyte or the egg is released by a process known as ovulation. Apart from this, estrogen is also involved in uterine and endometrial growth. If you remember, the endometrium is the outermost layer of the uterus which is shed each month in the form of menstruation but for the development and the maintenance of the endometrial layer estrogen is very important estrogen at puberty is responsible for the appearance of female sexual secondary characteristics such as breast enlargement body hair growth and like i said menstruation like i mentioned about androgens estrogen and progesterone are produced at low quantities even during the young age because estrogen and progesterone are involved in other processes like bone and muscle formation and general metabolism it is just that at puberty their levels begin to increase and at increased level they cause the appearance of secondary sexual characteristics and the development and the maturation of the oocyte estrogen is very important for the formation of bone which means that it is involved in picking up calcium from the blood and incorporating into the bone this is very important because during menopause, which is the stage where there is decreased levels of these female sexual hormones, at menopause, the women begin experiencing conditions like osteoporosis, which is 
caused by brittle bones where there is not enough calcium in the bones this occurs due to a decrease in the estrogen levels there is not enough estrogen to put the calcium back into the bones that is why osteoporosis is very common among menopausal women which includes several women over approximately 40 years of age not just osteoporosis menopause causes other symptoms such as hot flashes irritability mood swings and increased sweating with this let's move on to progesterone like i mentioned progesterone is also produced by the ovarian follicle but not when it is mature or not when it is developing after the oocyte is released during ovulation the ovarian follicle begins to degenerate and it is known as the corpus luteum and it is this degenerating corpus luteum that initially produces progesterone but if pregnancy occurs in the woman then the placenta once it forms that begins to produce progesterone during pregnancy and progesterone is extremely important for the maintenance of pregnancy which is why it is known as the pregnancy hormone not just pregnancy progesterone has other important functions as well but before we see that let's take a look at how it is synthesized so unlike estrogen progesterone is not derived from testosterone or androstenedione but in fact progesterone is directly synthesized from a cholesterol derivative much like how testosterone is synthesized from cholesterol progesterone is also synthesized from cholesterol what is unique about progesterone is that it can serve as a precursor for the production of androstenedione which is an androgen which means that technically progesterone can be converted to androstenedione which can then be converted to estrogen so progesterone can serve as a precursor for estrogen as well Let's talk about the functions of progesterone. Now I told you that progesterone is known as the pregnancy hormone, right? So even before pregnancy can occur, even before that the endometrial layer needs to be maintained properly so that implantation can occur. During the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle the level of progesterone begins to increase in the body because the degenerating corpus luteum is producing more and more progesterone that causes the endometrial layer to thicken in the uterus in the absence of pregnancy progesterone levels begin to decrease It's because the corpus luteum can produce only so much progesterone and with no progesterone to maintain the endometrial layer the endometrial layer is shed by the process of menstruation if pregnancy does occur progesterone is involved in the development of the breasts mammary glands and the mammary ducts after pregnancy ends that is after giving birth progesterone is also involved in the production of milk which is the lactation process So this is all about estrogen and progesterone they are mainly the female sex hormones which are involved in the development and the release of the egg or the female gamete or the oocyte they are also involved in maintaining the uterus in anticipation of pregnancy and during pregnancy they are also involved in supporting the pregnancy and ensuring that the baby gets enough nutrients from the mother With this let's move on to how the production of these hormones are regulated in our body. So the production of the uh, gonadal hormones which is the estrogen, progesterone and testosterone is governed by the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis which involves the hypothalamus, the anterior pituitary and the gonads. So what happens is that initially the hypothalamus secretes this gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH. This GnRH then signals the anterior pituitary to release follicle stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone LH. These hormones travel to the ovaries and the testes in females and males respectively and cause the production of the respective sex hormones. These hormones prompt the ovaries to produce progesterone and estrogen and the testes to produce testosterone. This is how the production of the female and the male sex hormones is regulated in our body with the help of the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary and the hormones that they produce.